Hey guys, welcome. Today I want to talk about a few topics that are pretty big within the crypto community, but if you're outside, just a casual crypto user, you might not have heard of. I'm thinking of trying to make this a weekly thing where I give little updates about what's going on, especially those things that aren't necessarily making it into the mainstream news. Let me know if you like it in the comments. And without further ado, let's dive into that first topic. Wait, before we start, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. This here is Pixelmon. If you're a Minecraft fan, then you might know that there was a very popular Minecraft mod of the same name that basically just made a sort of Pokemon world by modding Minecraft. The mod was really big and lasted a pretty long time until somewhat recently the real Pokemon finally decided to ask them to stop, which they did quite politely. And a lot of the users were disappointed, but that seemed to be the end of it. However, now there's a new Pixelmon, and it looks like it's in Minecraft, but apparently it's not. It's a uh, Metaverse World NFT project that got a lot of hype leading up to its initial NFT minting. Now these first 10,000 NFTs were called Pixelmon Generation 1, and they had the rarity of never being found in-game, you can only get them from the initial mint, and they came with promised land drops and token drops. These 10,000 were all priced at 3 ETH initially. Not all of them were sold for that much, as they did a Dutch auction, and as time went on, the price lowered. Nonetheless, after the initial sale of the first generation Pixelmon NFTs, the project had generated $70 million, making it so far the top NFT collection minting of 2022. Now the controversy comes into play over this past weekend when users who had gotten these NFTs kept pressing the project developers, or possibly developer, as we'll get into, for access to the real in-game asset rather than just the picture of it on OpenSea. Now, these people who had participated in the NFT drop clearly were fans of the project, and if you look at the project's website and the gameplay that it released, as well as the supposed screenshots of the game, you can see why. It looks pretty cool, well-developed, and they claimed that they were going to develop very fast, like releasing the full game within a year, so people were really excited. However, this was one of those big instances of expectation versus reality. Let's look. As we've been seeing, here's the expectation. And now let's get to the reality. <laughs> Pretty great, right? Would you like to pay $8,000 for this? A lot of people did. Now, luckily I didn't have to dig too much for my own research into this as Twitter user okhotshot.eth posted a thread explaining this whole ordeal. Now, I've already mentioned these first parts. You can take a look here where it's found that the creator of Pixelmon used uh, stock models, pretty cheap stock models, and then just converted them into several of the assets in game. And also admitted that he did that as well. This isn't necessarily a total red flag, as, you know, if you do buy an asset, you can use it. However, if we keep digging in, we get less and less confident about this project. The creator also seems to have hired artists from Upwork without telling them that they were making NFTs and paying them very little in comparison to how much he sold the NFTs for. On top of that, some people are claiming that the gameplay footage trailer is actually from somebody else's indie game and has nothing to do with the game, and in fact nothing has been developed. Furthermore, after the creator got this initial 70 million, several million of it were invested into other more standard NFT projects, which again was admitted to. As well as the fact that this seems to be totally centralized rather than decentralized, storing all of the art and data on their own site. Now, furthermore, according to this Twitter user, it seems that the creator of this game has a history of making Kickstarters that raised all of their funds and then didn't deliver anything. So just for reference, because it's a little bit funny, uh, like I said, this is the biggest NFT minting collection of 2022 by funds raised. The second biggest was Hype Bears Club, which also got a lot of negative attention as the uh, final NFTs weren't exactly wonderful looking. But hey, who expects NFTs to be the greatest works of art out there? Alright, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I want to talk about multiple topics, so let's move on to the next one. 
Another NFT collection that's gained a decent amount of traction in the recent days is this Not Your Bro NFT collection, which just finished its two pre-sale days and right now it has its public sale going on. Now, this one's opposite as so far, it's not about controversy, it's about the uniqueness of the project. What's unique about it? As the name suggests, Not Your Bro, it is a fully female team. I think actually the entire, everybody working on it is female and the NFT collection, as you can see, is all this one face with different hairstyles, colors, and everything like that. So it's sort of focused on female empowerment in the crypto and NFT space, which as we know, it is uh, mostly male or bro dominated at the moment. So I guess that's the main reason that this NFT collection is gaining traction. It's one of the few projects that's more focused on trying to tackle that unequal representation in the NFT and crypto space. You can see from their website, they're also committed to donating and working with different causes, supporting equality, not only women's rights, but LGBTQ+, and more things like that. So relatively unique for the space, it is currently quite dominated by crypto bros. Who, me? So I wish them success, and I hope that they do continue pursuing their goal of attracting more females and everybody outside of the uh, bro audience into the space because we all know that we need that, right? It's way too guy dominated at the moment. Let's keep an eye on it. And one last thing I'll talk about real quick, which I'm actually a little bit confused about. So if you guys know about it, please let me know in the comments. It's uh, talking Ben coin. All right, I got to interrupt myself real quick. So funny enough, I was uh, recording this video yesterday and talking about this Talking Ben coin and saying, it seems like it's trying to associate itself with this newly repopularized Talking Ben the Dog app, but it doesn't actually seem to be associated with the company at all. This Talking Ben coin, which is clearly modeled after this app, but as far as I can tell from a quick search, isn't actually associated anyway. So it seems kind of scammy and I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't really recommend it. It kind of looks like there's somebody just seeing the sudden growth and popularity of this app and then just trying to use sort of its IP to get people interested in this coin. So yeah, from that, I don't really see a super bright future from it. Uh, however, then today I was editing the video and then I was like going to put some shots of the uh, website and Twitter. <laughs> And then I saw that they were both taken down, so from that I can infer that uh, perhaps I was correct in it being a bit scammy. So uh, yeah, I guess that's probably the end of uh, Talking Ben Coin. There you have it. Of course, there's always way too many things going on in the crypto space to actually keep up with. I'm sure there's tons of interesting projects and stories that uh, I didn't mention here. I just picked three that were sort of trending around this time that you might not have seen in the mainstream news. And on top of that, yes, of course, there's other stories that are in the mainstream news, but I assume that you guys are finding that anyway. So I wanted to bring some things that are kind of hot in the crypto space, but maybe you haven't seen. Anyway, if you guys have any more info on any of these three things or just any interesting or funny thoughts, just go ahead and say them in the comments. Also, let me know if you like the idea of maybe a weekly or twice a week update of random hot events in the crypto space. So thanks for watching. Next video, I'm sure I'll be talking about something more relevant, maybe trying to teach you something. See you next time.